All right, so I wanted to ask, uh, what did it feel like creating a project like Eve? Why? What What did it feel like? Or what why? did it feel like? Yeah. Um. I mean, during the process of creating it, it it just it felt easy and fulfilling. Like you know, I'm a black woman. Um, I connect with so many different black women, so the process was dope. Like I, I actually had so much fun with it, and it made me excited to piece it all together to see how it would connect because I felt like even outside of myself being the one that created it, if anybody made a project like that, I know how it would make me feel. Um, I thought about how little girls would, would look at it and see themselves in the music and in the, the visuals when we, once we started creating them. I thought about how black women would, would feel when they, when they heard it, you know, just hoping that they resonate with the music. But just the idea of it excited me and what it could mean for people. Um, so, yeah, I, was, I had fun, man. Like, it was, it was just one of the, the most fun times creatively that I've had. So what would you say is the difference between Layla's Wisdom and Eve? The difference in Layla's Wisdom and Eve is Layla's Wisdom was for me. Um, you know, though uh, people resonate with it because everything you go through, there's somebody that has been through it too. That was for me. That was my detox. That was for me to get things off my chest to tell some stories, tell things that stressed me out, things that made me hopeful, things that made me fall in love, things that broke my heart. You know, um, but this one, this one was bigger than me. This was broader than me. This is for the village. Um, so this was uh, for, you know, the sisterhood. And that's the biggest thing, I think, is the connecting. You know, these are things that everybody can attach them to. I don't think there's a single song that you can listen to and be like, you know, I don't get it, or this isn't for me, or... You know, this is definitely all Rhapsody. It's like, nah, it's, it's way broader than that. So I would say that's that's the main difference, if anything. And two, you know, just the sound. With this one, because I wanted to capture that women are not monolith and we all different and we all have different flavors, I wanted the music to reflect that too. So you're going to see me, you know, just just being broader with my sound and showing that, you know, in the same way women are different, I can rap over different things and you know, I wanted the soundscape to match, you know, to be colorful in a bunch of different colors and energies. So, you know, we we just we went broader with the sound and way bigger than Layla. Okay. Well how was it working with D'Angelo and Jizzo on your latest single? Um, to have them on it is amazing. Um there that's those are two people that I didn't necessarily get to get in the studio and work with hand in hand, like you know, I didn't get to watch D'Angelo uh, record his vocals. I didn't get to watch Jizza write his verse and record it. Um, you know, those were all sent to us. But, you know, the energy to have them on the project because they're two legends. You know, Jizza is a legendary MC. D'Angelo is a legendary artist. Like, I put him up there as our prince. So, to be able to have these two artists that don't really come out and do a lot of music all the time, you know, outside of what they create for themselves it was an honor that they you know would even want to bless my record and to do it together on the same track like you know it's just exciting and 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 i'm just glad that we can have that energy on you know the record to help tell these stories now i do see queen latifah is on your your album eve mm -hmm. like how was that like connecting with her also did you did she give you any tips on being an artist like a female or an mc um, working with Queen Latifah, that's that's when we got to work on um, that song together. We talked on the phone a lot. We still talk on the phone. Um, I went to her house. She went came to the studio. She told me stories. So yeah, she definitely came in big sister mode from the jump from the very first phone call. Um, she, you know, she told me stories, gave me advice. She even gave me her opinion on some records. I got to play it, uh, uh, the album. You know, she told me like, I think this hook could be better. Or, you know, I really love this or, you know, like even the title of the album Eve, originally I had a whole different title for it. And she was like, uh, you know, I think it could be better. Like maybe just try to see what else you can come up with. And I'm glad she did because I came up with Eve and, you know, I was like, dad, that's really it. That's way better than the last one. I fell in love with this. So, yeah, you know, her imprint is kind of all over this record in, in some kind of way. But she, she was dope. Uh, uh, were there any artists that inspired you to be a lyricist from the 90s, like a Queen Latifah, Salt and Pepper, Lady of Rage? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of artists inspired me. 
Um, I don't think you can be an artist and not be inspired by someone that came before you. Um, my biggest inspiration is probably MC Light, then Queen Latifah, and then you, you know you got Jay Z, Biggie, Nas, um, Lauren Hill is my biggest inspiration of anybody. Uh, her and Jay Z, um, Common is a huge inspiration as well as Most Def. Um, later on, Gene Gray became a big inspiration. Um, you know, so D'Angelo, I love him. Like I, I just pull from everybody, but just to name a few off the top of my head, those are some. Michael Jackson was probably the reason I fell in love with music. He's an inspiration, but there are artists that are creative that don't do music, but it's just the creativity and art of what they do, like a Cicely Tyson and a Felicia Rashad. Like I'm inspired by them as artists, Nikki Giovanni, Maya Angelou. I'm inspired in the way they write and use poetry and connect words to tell stories. So, you know, I pulled from some of everywhere. Cool. If there was any track that you could remake from the 90s, what track would that be and why? If there was one track that I could remake from the 90s, it would be Method Man and Mary J. Blige's All I Need. Like, that's one of my favorite records. Like, I, I don't even know how to begin to explain what that is, but everything about that record is dope. Just how Meth came on it, the music, like Mary's soulfulness. And let's not even, that's just the music. We ain't even got to the video yet. Like, that's the first record that I memorized front to back. Um, you know, and I just love the storytelling and lyricism in it. The way Meth is, is bigging up his queen, um, which ties right in line to what Eve is. Uh, the way Mary came on it and just flex her style, like, you know, that would be the one that I remake. So what do you feel of the positive and negatives of being a female MC coming from North Carolina? Um, being a, a, a MC that happens to be female from North Carolina uh, the positives is, you know, I just bring a different perspective. Um, you know, I'm not from a big metropolitan city like, you know, most rappers uh, might be known to be or stereotyped to be or feel like they have to be or move to. I'm from a small country town from North Carolina, population 2000. So I just bring a different perspective. Um, you know, I'm from a, a state that's a melting pot where we listen to everything. We listen to New York, we listen to the South, Atlanta, we listen to the Midwest, we listen to the West Coast. So, you know, my sound and my creativity draws from all those different uh, different sounds of music and soundscapes of music. And, you know, I, I, it's not like New York where it's just like, oh, we rep in Brooklyn or we, we New York to the core. Like, I, we listen to everything. And I think that just made me a well-rounded artist and my artistry um, and, and, and really just push my creativity. Um, negatives, you know, I don't focus on negatives. I don't believe in that. So, yeah. What is the misconception that most people have about you? Um, the misconception that most people have about me, I think just based off the music that I make, people like to try to tell me what kind of person I am or what I like to do or what they expect me to do. And I tell people, like, it seems like they think, like, I go home and light incense all day and, you know, I read books and I watch documentaries on the Black Panthers, which, you know, I do all of those things, but I, I, I'm well-rounded and I'm balanced. You know, I like to go to the club and dance sometimes. I like to drink, you know. I like to have fun, you know, I, I, I listen to all different types of music, you know, it's just not, you know, music that always has a, a purpose or a storyline, you know, sometimes I like to listen to music that's just the vibe, you know, and I like to turn up with my friends, so, you know, I'm, I'm just a well-rounded, balanced individual, I'm goofy, I like to laugh and have fun, um, you know, uh, people look at me when they meet me, like, oh, you so shy, but, you know, there are times like, you know, you, you push the wrong button enough times, you see a whole other side of me. But, you know, I'm, I'm no different than anybody else. I'm human at the end of the day. So I think that's the biggest thing. Like, I'm, I'm human just like you. Um, yeah. As far as artists like me and, and being mainstream artists, uh, I, I think with anything that you want to do, that you want to last, it's always a marathon for everybody. Um, and we like to judge people's ascension sometimes based off where when we got on and what we saw. But every artist I know that is a legacy artist, they went through the same road that I did. And they had to put in their 10,000 hours and a lot of them 
had to put in at least seven to ten years. Um, and I haven't met a single artist, if they are, they're an anomaly, that hasn't had to do that. Jay-Z, you know, started at age, I don't, I don't know, maybe six, seventeen, nineteen. He didn't pop till he was, what, 26? Ken Jamar started when he was 16, popped around 26. You know, so everybody has to put in their, their due. Um, mine is actually right on time. Like, I'm a late bloomer. I didn't start doing hip hop and writing when I was 13 and 16, like a lot of hip hop artists. I started later on. So if I'm measuring my time based on, you know, the average of the seven to 10 year time that it takes to master a craft to get your 10,000 hours, I am right on time, so you know, that's how I look at it. You know, as a, as a female, you know, you're gonna go through your struggles, but I feel like as long as you stick to your craft and you face forward and you work hard, everything works out in the time that it's supposed to. So, you know, that's what I focus on. Um, how did you feel when you first heard that you were nominated for a Grammy? Like, what was that feeling? Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure as an artist, that's an amazing feeling, like you achieved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, being nominated for my first Grammy for my own project because I, my first nomination was for To Be a Butterfly when um, Kendrick was up for Album of the Year and Best Rap Album. Um, but you know, to do it with your own with your own project, like you know, it makes you feel like, man, my hard my hard work I'm being acknowledged for, it. and it's not based on numbers and sales because I, I, I wasn't number one on Billboard, even top five, even top 50. Um, you know, I didn't go platinum, I didn't go gold. Um, you know, so just to be recognized for the craft, for making dope music, for being a dope artist, uh, you know, that felt good and it, it felt like a win. You know, not just for me, but for the culture, you know, for hip hop, you know, for women in music, you know, to be only the fifth woman to ever be nominated for Rap Album of the Year against a Kendrick Lamar and a Jay-Z, you know, you know, I was happy that I could do it, you know, just to, to do my part to help the next person after me. And the next person was Cardi B and she actually won. She was the first female. So for me to be one of five women, you know, that was able to do that, uh, you know, that's that's dope. Um, and to see it progress. So, you know, it's, it's fulfilling and rewarding and, you know, it just, it solidifies what you know, like continue to be yourself, you know, that's all you need to be then, that's enough. Do you, uh, being a lyricist, do you feel like in hip hop now, it's, it should be okay to drop a freestyle? Like when you go on radio stations, Funkmaster Flex might be like, hey, I gotta put you on the spot, you gotta drop a freestyle. Do you feel like that's important in being an artist in today's music? Or it's, it's fine just, you know, as they say, mumble rapper, as they call people, so artists. Now say it, um, I don't understand the question. Break it no, down do you me. feel like, as an artist, do you feel like uh, you should drop a freestyle, like go to the studio and it's okay for you to be put on the spot to drop a freestyle or it's okay for artists to just show up and just promote their music? Oh, like if you like, no, nah, I don't want to rap today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I honestly feel like it, it should be up to the artist, really. Uh, you know, some some people aren't comfortable being put on the spot like that. and. You know, that doesn't take away from their art, you know. They might not be great freestylers, but they may be amazing and phenomenal writers. There are some people that are phenomenal and amazing freestylers, but they struggle at making songs. So it's just, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. I, I don't think as people you should be made to do anything. I think hip-hop, you know, comes in the way you do it in different forms. So, you know, it's part of the culture, like, yo, just drop a freestyle or whatever. But if you happen to choose not to, I don't see no problem. It's just like, nah, I'd rather not do that today, you know. So that's just how I look at it anyway. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to it. Okay. Was there ever a track that you received that from some an artist and they were like, hey, I want you to jump on this track. And you were just like, no, mm, no, uh, it doesn't necessarily fit my style of who I am as an artist. Yes. Okay. No, I didn't want to ask who it was, but. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how you will be. I don't know what, what, you, was, what we looking for with that one. <laughs> no, I don't know what that's what uh, I was just okay. asking. Oh, okay. But um, are there three? Yeah, that happens. Yeah. You know, it, it happens. If an artist sends you something that you necessarily don't vibe with, it doesn't necessarily mean that the song is whack. It's just that maybe you're not necessarily inspired by it or 
it doesn't fit whatever mood or energy that you're in or you know you, you might just not like it that doesn't necessarily mean it's whack though it's just like you know now it's not the time or it's it's not resonating with me so you know there's no there should be no feelings in it though it's just music the biggest ego in the room should just be the record so you know if you have something that I send somebody and they don't want to get on it, it's all good. Like, maybe I'll go back to the drawing board and find something that you vibe with. Somebody sends me something and I'm not feeling it. I'm just not feeling it. it it's no hard, it's no feelings when it comes to that. Music should be the biggest ego. Like, just make sure the song is dope. Mm -hmm. Are there three fem what three female artists would you want to work with? Whether it's in past or present? Like, um, that you like, I need to work with them. Female artists? Yes. Not just rappers, just Not artists. Just rap, artists, period. Okay, if I had to choose three female artists to work with, past or present, oh, that's so tough. Um, Lauren Hill would be one. Uh, Sade would be another, and Erica Badu. Okay, okay. That'd be my three. Have they ever reached out to you like, hey, we want to work, collaborate? Or reached out to them like, hey. uh, I've, I've met Lauren twice um, I reached out to Lauren via email uh, super supportive always sends uh, dope messages back mm. um, I've met Erica Badu like she's given me advice through the years she's been supportive um, never met Sade but I hope to one day so even if we never get to work I would just love to meet her and you know just to ask questions and learn uh, what's the next thing, the next step for you? Um, the next thing for me is releasing this new music, uh, getting on the road and touring it, promoting it. Um, and after that, it's the next wave of music, you know, whatever that is, just getting back in the studio and creating. Um, I want to take acting classes, you know, and, and just try to take my love for art to a, a, a new place. Um, but yo, those are just some ideas for the future. You know, I got other ideas, but you know. Okay, okay. Well, signing off. Okay. Look on that report. Thank you. Mm -hmm.